What's up, everybody? You are tuned in to another edition of The Remix, and I am your host, Kiara Cotton, here with a very special guest today, DJ I Am Ulisa. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for coming. I know we've got your crazy schedule. We're going to jump right into the questions. So sure. tell me, how did you become a DJ? Well, I started DJing house parties at Kent with my roommates and I just had a good playlist but I didn't have the equipment okay. so I just had like I was running off my computer and they used to call me a name which I don't want nobody to call me okay are you gonna tell D us the name yeah, yeah. okay DJ you you and I'm like Ugh, come on guys so but then I would just start getting interested in more and more stuff that after I graduated I just decided I was like let me go for it and I did Okay. And while you were at Kent, did you study music or were you on a completely different path? No, actually, I did business management, okay. but um, I was so into acting school. I actually got accepted to go to New York Film Academy. Wow. For, Congratulations. That's awesome. For acting. But I just, I couldn't go, I couldn't go for certain reasons, for personal reasons. So, yeah. but yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So tell me a little bit about these house parties. How did they happen? Where were they at? And how did, you just came with a good playlist, like just any normal just, student? Yeah, yeah. Just a good playlist of what was out back then. And um, just me and my friends just start doing parties, like every every college student out there. So at what point did you take your craft to the next level? Actually, um, I want to say, because I, I was interested in doing it at 2010 when I first okay. um, graduated. But then I was discouraged by certain people in my life, and I wasn't that confident. So maybe I would have to say 2015 is when I started fully. And what was that first step for you? Like, what was the switch that you said, you know well, what, this is what I want to do? Well, I had a... Um, a YouTube show called okay. I Am Elisa TV and I was highlighting everything that was going on in Cleveland because I felt like people thought that we were boring and we're not there's so much Absolutely. things to do but there's not enough promotion people don't know right, right. so I was like let me be that outlet and I was already um, known by certain people and then people started reposting my stuff so I was known as that but that wasn't really making me that much money right, so I was right. like you know let me go to something I love which is music and that's gonna make me money so I was just like, you know, I'm going to try this DJ thing again. I'm more confident now because I'm, you know, I'm building as a woman. So I was like, okay, let me start DJing. Awesome. That's super cool. And you're very confident. Like I said, I found you on social media. So tell me a little bit about how you started your brand. Your branding is so strong. I mean, the emphasis on your name alone is incredible. So tell me a little bit about how that got started. Um, well, I was uh, with the YouTube show, I Am You Lisa TV. So I already had my I Am You Lisa with Twitter, um, Facebook, in, in uh, Instagram. Mm -hmm. So I just took the TV off and I just left it like that. And I just started going really hard with it, like just promoting everything, everything with my name on it. I just feel like stuff with every, everything that's your brand is what you, what people see the most. Sure. So I just started going really hard with that. Um, what was your first big gig or the first gig where you were like, wow, I'm really doing it? When I start, when I DJ for Van Jones, when he was here, I couldn't believe that title called and was like, hey, we want you to um, go ahead and DJ for him for opening set. Wow. So I was ecstatic when I got that. That's awesome. So and since then, is that like the highlight of your career or what would you say the highlight of your career has been? Uh, well, I DJ for Cardi B when she wow. was here, uh, for Jim Jones when he was here. Um, there's other people that I've DJed for. C Magazine such a, a supporter of mine, so I have to give them a huge, huge shout out. Shout there. out to C Magazine. Yeah, they're really, um, they love my, my work, and they always contact me to do their uh, gigs. Awesome. And then C does Taste of the Summer, right? So that was that their event? That's their event, and I did it two years in a row. And it was so much fun. Yeah. If you guys could see some of the video, I'll send yeah, it to you. Yeah, I'll, I'll post this, guys, so you'll be watching it as we're talking about it. Mm -hmm. um, what was that experience like for you? What is it like meeting people that seek you out in particular to do their events? Um, what do you mean? Like, what does that mean to you f to have people seek you out for those opportunities? It, I, well, it means everything to me. Like, first, I always ask, like, how did you hear about me? And they always, like, reference, but mostly Instagram, how you mm -hmm. found me is how most people find me, too. And I just, like, wow, that's amazing that people can find you the through The power those, of social media. The power <laughs> of social media. Even though, like, I tweet, but I mostly look at Twitter. I just mm -hmm. tweet some of my stuff. But Instagram has to be the most where people contact me more and reach out to me. And then, um, especially artists out here too they send me music so it's like I just I love when people contact me and I never met them before I'm like I'm always curious like even on my website when you um I, there's a question there like how did you hear about I'm Lisa and mm -hmm. then you know people are able to answer that um has it always been easy for you to build that network 
um, just based on the references or was it just always referrals or how did you go about building your network? Um, I definitely went out a lot. I went out to every networking event. I went out to the clubs, which I mostly wanted to kind of be in. Mm -hmm. And that's how I met people, just networking events, um, talking to people. Like, you can't build. I mean, you can. Some people can if they have, like, a strong um, Instagram following. But I'm still building mine up. So, therefore, I have to be out there shaking hands, kissing babies. Absolutely. You Absolutely. know what I'm saying? Like, just to, um, just to build um just my audience was that natural for you like a lot of people i know some people may feel shy or um uneasy when approaching people they don't know but was that the case for you no mm -hmm. it was just it's kind of natural for me just talk to people and just give my card if they ever need me reach out to other people and um you know i have a just a lot of people that know other people and just referrals so that's a blessing for me yeah. you know so absolutely okay so let's get into actual djing let's let's give me the nitty-gritty here what is your biggest dj pet peeve like you know we've seen the memes where people are like don't request this don't ask the dj to play your favorite song so what's your own personal pet peeve as a dj um my personal pet peeve has to be um i don't mind the request okay cool you want to hear something specific that's fine Getting too close. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'll usually, like, if I'm somewhere, I would like to, like, create a little space where you can still talk to me. Mm -hmm. I, I like, I love to greet people that come up to me just like, hey, can you play something? That's cool. I'll play it. Let me work into my set, you know, and I will definitely play it for you. But that has to be when it gets so close in my ear. And yeah. I'm like, oh, come on. Like, <laughs> let me reach out Personal to you. space. <laughs> Personal space. I, I don't mind the request, but just so much of the personal space yeah and yeah. i think that's also a respect thing like at any job you don't want someone all in your bubble just, yeah like just it, like if we're mcdonald's i'm not reaching over you the know counter, the right. counter so it's like just a little bit of space if i, I would like that but <laughs> that's all. Yeah, okay that's so that's not too bad just respect your personal space um so what about actual djing in terms of music how would you describe yourself in that regard like what's your is there a specific genre or are you just across the board uh, open format DJ. Okay. So I play everything. Okay. Um, you know, I'm Hispanic, so I play that, the Latin music, which I'm getting more into doing my own gigs in that manner, just because um, the lack of Latin music clubs and just parties are yeah. here. There's none, basically. Okay. You know, so I'm going to try to start that. It's a little hard, but I'm definitely going to go for it. And every, you know, I'm getting to more of um, Afro beats. Okay. That's what I'm getting into more and more into reggae music. Like I've always been into reggae music, but it's not that. It's just getting more into like I, I just love playing it, so I'm getting more into that. Okay, that's super dope. So, what would you say are some of your go-to songs to get the crowd going? Like, if you had a top three to five songs, what are your like go-to's to get the crowd interacting with you? Um, it has to be Bruno Mars' Uptown okay. Funk. Um, people love that. Uh, what's another one? Obviously, the line dances. Okay. Uh, Cupid shuffle. The to me is my favorite. I said to me, that one. <laughs> That's a good everybody one. gets up for it. Even though I still I play it so many times, I still do not know. know. But it's one of those line dances that is hard. And anybody that has ever seen the Tamiya line dance knows that like the footwork. It's is just crazy. It's something. I'm still, I'm still looking every single time. I always try to study and I can't. I was like, you know what? One day I'm gonna learn. Yeah. That and what else? Um. I just think like old school music, like um, I would have to say Billie Jean. People like, yeah. oh, yeah, they love that song still. Um, but I think that's, that's what can I remember right Okay, now? Yeah. that's totally cool. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit about, you talked about being Hispanic. Mm -hmm. um, has that played a role in your career at all? Has it hindered you at all? Um, how has that been for you in your career? Uh, I haven't really thought about it too much about, but it hasn't helped me or it hasn't hindered me at all. Okay. You know, it's just... I don't know. I just, I've always liked rap music because I grew up here. Mm -hmm. um, I came here when I was six years old. So, where were you from originally? Of Venezuela. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. My, I, I was born in Caracas, Venezuela. Wow. That's so, so yeah. cool. And I've listened to rap music my whole entire life. So, I always like, it was just easy for me to do that, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but it hasn't, it hasn't helped me, it hasn't hindered me. Have you been back to Venezuela since? No, I would not like to be back. No. It's really not in a good state right now. Yeah, I saw, I think it was The Guardian, where I think that nearly 2 million people have left since 2015. And why do you think that is, like, the current state of the economic climate? Or are there other factors that go into that that we don't really know about? Definitely other factors. As far as, like, the president is just limiting the food, limiting everything, wow. work. So people have overpopulated where my family's from, where they're 
is Peru. Peru. And I actually went there last month um, to Peru. Yeah. And there's so many Venezuelas there because of what happened down there. There's no food. People can't eat. It's just... It's really in it's, a bad state. Yeah, it's definitely um, a sad, sad time. Um, sending our thoughts and prayers to them for sure. Yeah, um, But we will talk about happier things. Tell yeah. me a little bit about what you have going on currently. I know that you're going to be at MOCA this Friday. Yes. Um, tell me a little bit how you got involved with that. Uh, well, I have to give it up for Archie Green. Mm -hmm. uh, he's the one who reached out to me to do the um, panel, uh, talk about women's hip-hop. Uh, I'm so excited to just talk about it because um, for me, even though it might have seem e it might seem easier than because um, of my brand is so strong, I keep promoting myself. Yeah. It has really been hard just competing against the boys because there's literally like six or seven DJs that mm -hmm. I could just call off right now, uh, female DJs that we all support each other. Absolutely. Like it's not even a hate thing. And you would yeah. think that we're with men, everything's kind of like a hate thing. And mm -hmm. I hate to say that, but it's. Sometimes it, right. with us, no, we, we give each other jobs before we give the men. Love it. You know what I'm I saying? So, yeah, that's but support. It's that's necessary. definitely support. Um, so shout out to all my female DJs out there. I love y'all. <laughs> uh, but um, with men, it's been a competition, been a little talk, uh, trash talking. It has been hard. Really? You know, for me, uh, especially because I, I, mean, I was friends with some of the DJs. And now if I got, I got a gig and they didn't. They think it's me talking. No, you know, it's yeah. basically, the, I don't get offended when somebody else gets a job that I had last year, only because everybody wants different flavor of music. Like mm -hmm. you might have something that they want and then they'll, they'll contact me next year if they want me back. Yeah. You know, but you can't get offended when it's this business where you could be replaceable anytime. You Absolutely. know what I'm saying? Especially as a DJ, like, hey, um, I want this type of flavor. I know she plays more reggae. Let me, I want some more reggae this time, you know? Right. So it has been difficult just competing against men. Okay. And how do you deal with those altercations? Like, how do you, do you just ignore them? How do you push past those adversities? Because obviously you want to be cordial with your peers. Mm -hmm. But so how do you push past those instances? I, I basically ignore them. Okay. I ignore, ignore them. It's just I cannot, I can't get involved in that. You know, I just can't. Like, they have, they have never even came up to me to talk to me about it. So, therefore, I can't even address it. I mm -hmm. just know it's about me. I know you've said it about me. That's fine. But when you actually come up to me, we could talk about it. Yeah. But this, I can't. I have too focused on pushing my brand and making sure that, you know, I... I'd be able to feed my family because this is actually full time for me. Yeah. Has it always been full time or did you gradually? Gradually. Okay. Yeah. What were you doing before becoming a full time DJ? Um, I was actually just working at a staffing place. Okay. Yeah. So uh, now I'm, I'm doing weddings and stuff like that. So now I'm just doing full time. That's super cool. Mm -hmm. um, how would you describe Cleveland's music culture? or like Northeast Ohio and the place that you DJ? Do you think that Cleveland has a specific sound? Like we talked to a lot of artists who say Cleveland hasn't found their sound yet, but do you agree with that? Uh, I kind of think so, yeah. I think more people are, now I've noticed that more DJs are starting to play Afro music, Okay. Afro beats. I don't know, I'm not trying to disrespect nobody, but I don't, I don't know how to yeah. say it properly. Afro beats or Afro music, but I know they're playing more reggae, and yeah. that was not involved two years ago yeah. at all. I used to still, I want to play everything that, if I see a crowd of mixed crowd, I want to play everything yeah. to please everybody. But even if I'm in an, one specific crowd, I still put my reggae in. I still put one Spanish song in, just to, just to get the reaction. Yeah, you know? and also to expose people to new experiences. Um, I personally love when I go to clubs, and I'm like, wow, I've never heard something like this before. Mm -hmm. um, while you're DJing, how do you kind of gauge the involvement? I talk on the okay. mic. Um, I talk on the mic, say, Hi, how's everybody doing? Have a drink, make sure you tip my bartenders, whatever the case may be. I try to in involve the crowd in, in that way by just talking. Not in every song, but just do a little talking here and there. Um, I do, I feel like in the hip hop world, that here in Cleveland only, because mm -hmm. I've been to other places, we're not really open to uh, new music that much. Okay. We're not, if it's That's not on the radio, they, gotcha. they, won't, okay. they won't like. It, and actually, there was like a debate on Twitter about that, just on amongst DJs that, yeah, like you guys, I'm playing something new that you haven't heard. Like, you don't still out their heads. They, they just don't react, period. Just blank. Yeah, just <laughs> blank. So it's, it's kind of hard for new new music where it's not on the radio. It's just new that maybe I like a song, maybe I'm introducing it. It's kind of hard. Um, how do you find new music? What are your main tools for to do that? Um, I basically listen to a lot of like, 
like pop. Uh, well, I look at the charts. Okay. See what's popping first. Okay. Like, okay. <laughs> so this is what's what's popping first, and then I listen to on a seven point nine. See what they're playing, and that's basically my source. Just listen to the radio and then see what's hot. Um, sometimes I get involved into SoundCloud, but it's more I get lost sometimes in like. Um, I love EDM music, which mm -hmm. I'm trying to transition my way into. Yeah. So I'm, I get lost in that. So most of that stuff is not on the radio. Okay. Well, maybe 96.5, but not like that hard Like beat. the heavily. Yeah, right. Heavily. Yeah. So I get lost. And I still go back to my 90s music. Yeah, you got to. You got to get the I'm a 90s baby. So I'm just like, bring I it to me. I still go it. back. So it's like sometimes I just, if I hear something in the club, I'll shazam it. And then I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, that's good because the crowd is reacting. But mostly, like, I just still get lost in my 90s. Yeah. And then how do you feel about artists sending you their music? Is that overwhelming for you, or do you welcome that? I do welcome it. Uh, it does get overwhelming. Your email is crazy. <laughs> yeah, it does get Sifting overwhelming. through everything. <laughs> yeah, but I, I definitely encourage all artists to send me music. I love to hear. I even put it in my mixes. Um, she Belongs to the City, which is all Cleveland um, artists. Yeah. I have three volumes on SoundCloud. And actually, my, um, I'm sorry, not on SoundCloud. On my website. Okay. I am Yulisa Dennett. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Girl, feel free to plug yourself. Now is the time. Um, mm -hmm. So the volumes. Tell me about the volumes. I didn't even know that that was something that you were doing. So tell me a bit about a little bit about how you got started with that. Uh, well, a lot of artists sent me music. So I was like, let me put it into a mix because that's the way of people just hearing stuff. Like mm -hmm. people need to hear. Um, sometimes when you set, when you even post it on Instagram, people just don't register. They right. go to scroll past it. So maybe if I put it in the mix and I keep promoting it, people, and then if you, let's say I tagged you into something, like you're going to want to listen, right. you know, so people want to repost it. So if I do 10 artists, 10 artists are going to repost my, my mixes. And then that's how I get their audience. And that's how they do. But some, there's a lot of good artists out there in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. So I want to represent, I want to give that exposure to them, you know, and I do also, I do all types of mixes. Like, She Belongs to the City is only yeah. by Cleveland. And then I do um, She's Got the Vibe, which is just summer jams, you know. Okay. So, yeah. And all of these are available on your website. On my website, yeah. Awesome. You guys can download it, too. And it'll all be on WKYC.com. I'll be sure to link her Instagram, all her social media profiles, as well as her website in that information. Mm -hmm. I guess my last question is, for the aspiring DJ, you, you've made your way from... DJing parties at Kent to DJing for big name stars and at huge venues. What is your advice to other aspiring DJs? Um, definitely practice. That's why I tell all new DJs that have come up to me, like, hey, can you teach me? Um, honestly, I don't have the time. I wish I could. Yeah, you're full time. You work full time. Yeah, I work full time, <laughs> and, which means promoting myself, taking pictures, doing mixes. Mm -hmm. Um, and I noticed now that SoundCloud or other MixCloud um, just has a limit of mixes that you can post up. Okay. So now people, are, I see DJs doing a playlist, which it takes the art of actually mixing and blending the songs. Yeah. But I still encourage all DJs to mix, to keep mixing, to ha have a deadline. Like I just told one of my girls that um, wants to start DJing, like, practice practice every day and if you don't know a lot of people in Cleveland you have to go out even if you don't like it mm -hmm. you have to go out because how are people gonna know you absolutely you know so networking and practicing is the most important thing in DJing and if you want to know what kind of um equipment you really honestly I've learned a lot from YouTube yeah. so I want to yeah. encourage people to look at YouTube videos and you gotta you gotta know which DJ you want to be you want to be an EDM sure. DJ, you want to be the hip-hop DJ, all formats, you have to figure out what kind of DJ you want to be. I always tell every new upcoming DJ that comes up to me, like, hey, I want to start DJ. I always ask why. And whatever reason, I said, okay, cool. Make sure you start doing your research, which mm -hmm. is YouTube. Okay, when finally you get your equipment, practice, practice, practice. I'm still practicing. Mm -hmm. I'm still doing mixes. Like, people's like, why do you still do mixes? Because it's a form of me practicing. Yeah. Um, I lied. That was my last question. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm, no. I'm a real good talk. I no. can stay here all day. That was great. And again, I you let me backtrack. I think you made a very important point that in the age of technology that we're in, that mm -hmm. YouTube is probably one of the best teachers out. Like best teachers. Yeah, I learned a lot. So I learned how to do makeup. I learned a lot from YouTube. So, yeah. <laughs> yes, your makeup is always on point. Can we Thank talk about you. that? Thank do you, you always so do it yourself? Yes, I do. And then uh, only on my photo shoots, I use my girl Alicia Sparks. So get sure sparked, guess. Get her. But yeah, um, for just a daily, I just do a little bit of just 
just a little bit of eyeshadow, a couple stuff, yeah. but I don't do the heavy stuff. I don't know how to, and I don't think I really need it. No, so, great, yeah. beautiful. Oh, thank beautiful. you, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Um, I totally lost my train of thought. Um, <laughs> but oh, when you're not DJing, where can people find you doing? Honestly, just out and about. Like I'm just, I don't, I don't be in a specific place if I'm not DJing. I usually like to support other DJs, mm -hmm. um, but I just probably be at home. Yeah. Doing, are your... Downloading music, researching stuff. Yeah. What are some of your favorite places in the city? Have you always grown up in Cleveland? Like when you moved, when you immigrated from Venezuela, did you um, come straight to Cleveland? I came straight to Cleveland. So Cleveland is my home on the west side, which, you know, now I didn't, when I was younger, I didn't really explore too much in the east side. So mm -hmm. when I, when I, as I got older, the east side, I traveled to the east side, I traveled to the west side to do gigs and I love it. Okay, and then we talked about MOGA, but what are some of your other upcoming events that people can find you, or just should they just stay tuned into your social media? Uh, definitely stay tuned, and I believe I'll be at the park okay. on Friday after MOGA. Okay. Um, and I am going to throw a party for my birthday this is month. Awesome. Um, but it's going to be a Latin party, but everybody's welcome. Okay. So, um, and I just have weddings. I've been reached out for weddings a lot. So I'm into that now. So. Awesome. Awesome. All right, guys. That's all I have for you guys today. Again, one of Cleveland's hottest DJs, DJ I Am You, Lisa. Thank you so much for joining Thank me. You so I really much for appreciate it. Me. I had so much fun. Right, so thanks for watching. I am Kira Cotton, and you are watching The Remix. Bye, guys. <laughs>